Hello, everybody, and welcome to Libromancy, a podcast about the magic of books. I'm Josh, and today I'm talking about The Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi. So, let's avenge the magic of books. Now, uh, first thing I want to say, this was a pretty good book. It is the second book. It suffers from second book syndrome at least a little bit. It's not quite as bad as other books I've seen, but it does exist. Unfortunately, there is no third book at the time of this recording in 2022. So, and no word from the author. So, if you've made it this far, I'm sorry you're going to have to suffer with the rest of us who have started this series and finished up so far, but... No, no word. If you look on Tomi Adeyemi's, uh website or on Goodreads or anywhere else, it uh, has no explanation or notice or anything about the second one. And I know that theoretically she's working with the producers to produce the movie of the first book, which is great. Good for her. But uh, I really feel like having a third book would really solidify that relationship where she could say I have a full trilogy but that's not about this let's just say that I have very low expectations for seeing a third book anytime soon but let's talk about the book in a non-spoiler kind of way things were better in this book worse in this book I really felt like she nailed her characters pretty well in this one Um, I'll talk about that a little bit more one thing I didn't really love in the the writing kind of style is she changed her point of view every chapter in the first half-ish of the book and that was really jarring to me for some reason in this one and I think if she had done slightly longer chapters or two chapters one character two chapters another I I think it might have flowed a little better at least to me Um, so I I think that would I think that was something that kind of really helped, had me struggling through the first part of this book. Um, you know, maybe instead of doing 80 small chapters, she does, you know, 40 to 45 slightly longer chapters. Um, then I can get more of a hook into each character as I'm reading them. And then I want to get back to them when I switch. And so it kind of keeps this uh, pacing up for me, at least. Now, the plot of this book, I'd have to say it's a decent plot. I don't really feel like there was a ton of movement as to like actually acquiring anything in here but it was still you know it is a a young adult book and it's it is what it is now i kept calling this as i was reading it i kept calling this uh the children of virtue and vice and i don't know if that's a better one vengeance in this instance for this book definitely is a vice of all the main characters everybody has to get vengeance for everybody else it did not uh, i just didn't really flow with me super well now uh, this book took me a little bit to get into. It took me maybe 25% of the way before I was like, okay, now I'm going to keep going and I can just, you know, power through what I want to power through. Um, not so much, not the same as the first book. The first book really dragged me in and I wanted to keep reading it immediately. This one was just a little slower to get me excited in what was happening. So I think that's kind of all I'm going to have for the non-spoilery section. So let's move into some spoiler sections and let's just kind of get everything out in the open characters. Like I said, everybody felt like a teenager again. And I'm not sure, like that's a credit to to Tomi that she was able to write good teenagers. But at times I was like, they didn't act exactly this way in the last book. Why do I feel like they are regressing in this book? Now, granted, there's a lot of stuff that happened at the last book. You know, she gave magic to pretty much everybody or like all the like anybody who has some de- some ancestry of the Maji can have magic and there's a lot more of it. So it was I just did not enjoy reading what felt like kids squabbling. I can't trust you because you did one action that I disagree with and I can't trust you because you did one action I disagree with and let's talk and I'm trying to be truthful, but oh no, I see that there's something else happening at the exact same time. Clearly you've betrayed me and this was all a joke and a front to you. And it's like, okay, this is not like what's going on. Like calm yourself. And I get it. You guys are in vengeance mode because uh, of what's happening. You know, the nobility's attacking. The Alika is attacking the, the nobility. They're all trying to, to win and the nobility is winning again. But like, Take two breaths. Calm yourself. You know, Mama Agby in this book, I loved her. She was a great voice of calm. She was a great voice of reason. She really is one of the ones who is like the only one of the very few who's actually playing for both sides that 
the war needs to end. It doesn't matter whose fault it is. It doesn't matter who does what, as long as we can stop fighting between the Maji and the nobles and the rest of everyone else. And so, you know, her as a character was amazing. Loved it. The rest, less so. Now, there's one character that I wasn't sure about, and it's Enan. And I'm still, I don't know where I fall on him, because I really liked him in the first book. You know, he was kind of this character who's like, oh, I've been taught that magic's always been bad, and now I have magic, and I've kind of always had magic, and I'm trying to deny it, but it's a poison. And he's been indoctrinated with all this stuff, and he's kind of breaking free, and he is, you know, falling in love with Zelly. But in this book, we think he's dead for the first 14 chapters, and then we get, uh, we learn that he's actually alive. And this, I'm just, I'm not sure if I'm mad about it or glad that he's alive. Like, I'm glad he's alive because that means that he and Zell can still be together in the end and be happy. But I'm also sad because I'm kind of like, why didn't, you know, am I, am I mad that you just didn't stick through with your decision to kill him off? Or like, was it never really the plan? Like, how did he survive? You guys beat, you won the island, basically. You cast the magic. And now it's three weeks later. Like, how did you get off the island? How did you get healed? How did your mother find you? You know, for all we know, she was still back at the capital. And no one was there to, like, bring you back because you had to soar through your gut and were dying immediately. Now, it takes him three weeks to come back. That's fine. They're healing. You know, I like that part. And then I just, Enan, you need to grow a backbone and stop just capitulating to everything your mom says. If you're going to be king, which is what something you want, then you have to be king. And you have to say, no more of this lily silly stuff saying like, oh, I'm just going to disband the nobility. And like, mom, you have to stop. And then just say, oh, well, it's for the good of the kingdom. I guess you have to keep going. Like, stick to your guns. If you say no, then say no and make her respect that and say, no, I'm doing this. But don't quit just expecting everyone to say, okay, we'll get rid of all of our kingdoms and our nobility just because you're the king. You know, like that's never going to work with anyone. You should have known your mom was bad the whole time. Every time she says, let's go murder all those other people who are fighting us. Like, no, duh, they're fighting you. Have you thought about what's going on? And then we learn what his mom actually did and that she leaked to the burners and got the Reformation ruined, which kind of started this whole war again, led to the raid, led to these feelings and the destruction of the magic. Like, oh my gosh, like your mom is horrible. And then he finally is like, oh, you know, she is bad. And he sedates her. And it's like, Ugh, why would you do that? Like, just freaking kill her, please. Like, I get that she's your mom and that would be very hard. But I don't know if my mom was out telling me to, like, go murder a bunch of people just because. And that I, you know, and I learned that she had started a war, which has killed countless of countless people. I would not be all like, oh, yeah, that's just mom. She's doing her thing. I'd be like, okay, this is horrible. I have got to get rid of this, you know, do something else. And you can't because she's a very powerful connector, which is a cool thing that there are kind of two types. There's the. The Maji, which are just the regular people with magic, the, the Titans, I don't know why they would have a different word for like the nobility with the magic, because technically you have to have the magic to have, you know, you have to be part of that lineage to get the magic anyway. But I mean, they weren't raised in that culture. Oh, well. And then we learn, actually, I like that it was a good piece of lore, a very good piece of lore. We learned that some of the Maji had tried to take over and they were punished and they lost their gift. And that's where the ancient nobility stems from that's kind of whole thing so it's like really it's just like two you know big family tree on one side and the family tree on the other side and then now there are things called connectors which basically you can connect to others if you're say magic type and then you can suck them dry steal the 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 asha in their body and use it to power your own kind of become like a really blunt instrument but like it's very powerful and nahanda his you know, enan's mom is that and so is amari so this was a really cool piece of the magic that I I really liked. But there's some other things that I was a little, you know, let's go on about. I liked the conflict between Zelly and Amari, parts of it. I didn't like all of it. The main parts I liked is that they are arguing. Not They're not necessarily arguing about trauma, but Zelly's like, you think you had it so bad, like, my parents are dead, and I've never, you know, I'm all alone. We've been persecuted forever. And Amari's like, yeah. I agree. You, your parents are dead and that sucks. But like, at least your parents care about you and they didn't try to actively like sabotage you and kill you and hurt you and, 
beat you all the time. Like your parents loved you and they supported you. Like I was imprisoned. I had to kill my own father. Yeah, your dad's dead. And my father was a horrible person. But even though he was a horrible person, I still loved him because he was my, you know, I just thought was really good couple minutes there in that trauma, just like everybody's trauma is different, but it's all valid. And saying that one person's trauma is worse than another, while technically some things could be worse than others, it's all very subjective and it's all very painful to everyone involved. Now, that was really good. I just, the rest of the time, I could not really stand Zelly and Amari. I, I liked Amari a lot more. Zelly, she just... She went into the funk when her dad, because her dad died, and I get that. But I felt like the whole book was her, until one scene was just like, okay, I'm going to just give up, and I can't do anything, and I'm not going to do anything. Oh, and Enan, he got stabbed by his dad, and clearly his dad, who wanted to kill us all, was stabbing him because he also, you know, Enan also wanted to kill us all. Therefore, I hate Enan. And it's like, well, that's not... If Enan really supported his dad, his dad wouldn't have tried to kill him. You, you follow my drift here? Like, if two people agree on something and a way to go about it, they generally don't stab each other. Now, Enan did get stabbed, so clearly he didn't agree with everything his dad wanted to do. Now, the other thing in this one, again, it kind of just goes back to everybody feeling like kids. They really are only focused on, on the revenge. Enan tries, Amari tries, but nobody else listens to them. And then as soon as somebody else flips and tries for peace or a different solution, Zelly and Amari and Enid all flip to, oh no, we have to fight and get our vengeance. So that part was like, can you not hold your ground for like 10 minutes? Like, I know you had one attack, but like you gave peace a shot. You have to give it more than just one minute for it to actually work. Like Enid's like, okay, we'll give everybody who defects some double rations. We'll give out the food. And then... They think it's a trick because Zelly's like, no, Enan's going to kill everybody because I hate him and he hates me. And it's like, well, clearly he doesn't hate you. Otherwise, you know, he would be doing a lot of weird thing, other things. But like, you are so off and you are just blinded by your vengeance and your hate. You know, stop it. And so they start, they attack and they burn all the food. And so because of that, Enan has to retaliate and like open up the supply line so his people don't starve. And it's like, you guys were so close. You guys were so close. Like, why didn't you listen to each other? Or like, just try. And like, Amari's like, okay, we shouldn't fight. Like, if we fight, we'll lose because the the Titans and the Connectors are very powerful. But like, we can find peace with my brother. And then she's like, oh, well, I think my brother betrayed me. And so I'm just going to go as cruel and as hard as I can. We have to fight till the death and win. And it's like, well, what, what, what happened? You were just on the side of peace. You gave up on peace because of one thing that you didn't even bother to verify if it was true or not? Like, oh my gosh, there were so many dumb decisions. Like, oh, this is this is one that I just, I shook my head a little bit and I was like, why would you even not consider this? Like, Enan is king and he's meeting with Amari and Zeli and he's like, look, I have a treaty. I will, I will sign this. I'll give it to you guys to sign. Basically, freeze your people. No repercussions. No nothing. Nobody can do anything to anybody, you know, which is like the ideal society anyway. But like, you get what I'm saying. And then the war horn sound. And they're like, oh, you betrayed us. He's like, what? No, I didn't. I didn't come. I came here alone. I swear. Nobody even knows I was here except for like my bodyguard that I had to ditch. And he wouldn't have told anybody. And they're like, well, we hate you. We'll never trust you again because you're so dumb. And you're just a, an evil person trying to kill us all. And it's like. If he was really trying to kill us all, kill y'all, do you really think he would have had them sign, sound the war horns? Oh, and by the way, instead of just letting him go back to the camp, why don't you bring him with you and have him be your hostage? Wow, wait a minute. A hostage? Specifically the king? That sounds like it would be a really good bargaining chip in getting them to leave you the leave you alone. Maybe that would be a good way to go about this. Just putting it out there that uh, maybe the king, who was literally in your grasp, handed you the treaty, maybe he would be a good person to keep around. Eh, you know. And Rowan, I did not like Rowan. I've never liked Rowan. He's a, you know, he's a good mercenary, but he is the love triangle for Zell that I didn't feel like we needed. You know, he always does everything for Zell, nothing for Amari, even, you know, unless there's a promise of heavy gold. And then he's just willing to forgive it for Zell 
anyway. So it's like, why, you know, if he's really this mercenary and he's from a land and they don't have the magic or whatever, like, why is he so obsessed with Zelly? Why is he in love with her so much? She is a 16 to 17, 18 year old girl. And while I can't remember his own age, I'm pretty sure it's older. Like, at least 24, 25 is what he feels like, especially if he's a mercenary captain and like commander. And then. She tries to sleep with him because she feels bad and because she thinks she likes him. And then she has some PTSD from that, understandably. And she freaks out. And then he snipes some stuff back at her and she snipes some stuff at him. And I'm like, just cut out this. We have plenty of good relationship drama already. We do not need a third, you know, a love triangle side for Zell to kind of figure out. That was, no, I just didn't enjoy it. So Rowan, bad character. I wish he had died underwater in the cavern instead of being saved by Zell. And I know because of that, she figures out her connector power, which is super overpowered, by the way, even at the cost of one life, the cost of one life for infinite bring people back from the dead, infinite bring people back from the dead. Like that is not even a hesitation in my mind. You know, if we could connect the healer and me the reaper to each other we could bring people back like okay sign anybody up for that who would not be willing to die so that everybody else basically ever could be brought back to life no one no one's going to leap at the chance to be like the only sacrifice for eternal life for everyone else forever yeah i didn't think that would uh i'm pretty sure everybody would volunteer to be the one person who like gets to be remembered as the enabler of eternal life so I, I just felt like that connected power was a little bit overpowered, that it could bring people back. There's really no limit to this connection, especially since Mama Agby was the sacrifice. Like, I was so sad when she died. She's really my favorite. Now, the other thing, I was kind of like, well, how does this work exactly? Is that the nobles have the chance that they use to control their powers. But like, why would the nobles have the chance? It's not like they were ever studying it or trying to use it. Like, they pretty much just burned and destroyed all things of magic that they could ever so i just was like well that doesn't make sense like how do they get that but the other thing is that the connectors specifically like amari and nahada and the other connectors they are created by when the magic was brought back and they lost of someone close to to that person but there are a lot of connectors on the nobility side like which i guess is fine but like the connectors at least the way the ability uses them they just drain the life they basically kill the people who have the same powers around them suck in all that power, use it, get a next group of people, drain all their powers. And it's like, would none of these people be like, you know what? I don't necessarily want to die today. Like, I'm going to go do something else. So like, I don't want to be drained to death. But they just like throw it away these lives. I'm like, you can't. There can't be that many nobles who have this magic in them that you are just willing to throw away handfuls of their lives for one attack just no good and i was really sad when majeli died that was pretty sad that he was able to connect with her and form this amazing you know shadow army that was huge and you know a couple of them at least and they were able to fly and fight and you know but then i was like no we have to keep pushing it harder and harder and it was too much for him and i was just so sad though and then the the press and funk it causes her you know again not so much fun okay this is the one thing that i liked about rowan which I think if Rowan had stayed, it's just like, hey, I'll be your good friend and like, I'll make you laugh because I like you because you remind me of my sister or something like not in any weird. I love you kind of a way would have been great. But when he takes her underwater and they like surf with the whale and he jumps in, pulls him up out of the water and she like laxes and has fun again. That was great. And I love that for him. That was it. That's the only good thing he did. So but I think that's going to wrap up my discussion today of. Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tori Adeyemi. Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, thanks to David Hillowitz for the intro and outro music. If you have any questions or comments, please send them to LibromancyPod at gmail.com. Please like and subscribe wherever you get your podcast from. And remember to avenge the magic of books. <laughs> <laughs>